In this lecture, we will talk about creating a Spotify music adder. In the first section, we're going to create a script that will read our saved tracks from our profile, like you see in the terminal on the right hand side. In order to do that, we will use a third party library, so we need to import it before we use it. In this case, we will use Spotify, which is a third party library from some other guy on GitHub that did a great job in doing this. So let's install this library before we are going to use it in our side of our script. Once installed, we can use the documentation in order to understand how to use it and authenticate with Spotify. The documentation, as always, gives us a full example, but let's go ahead and build it our own. The three things we need here are the ID secret and URI. We will talk about those values once we need them. So first, let's go in and create the Spotify instance with a read scope. The Spotify library has different scopes for reading, writing, modifying and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and set a fixed username that is going to be empty for now. We'll look at where we can get that in a second and then set up the read token for our instance before we then finally instantiate our Spotify instance with the read token. As always, what we can do here is go to the examples folder on the GitHub page. Most projects have a really nice examples library, so we can use information from there. In our case, we need to import a util library from the spotify.util element. And as we've done before several times, we'll import this with an alias. So the s keyword gives us an alias that is going to be util. And now we can call the prompt user token method with our username and the library scope. And here we can see the scope for the read libraries also in the documentation. Once we have our read scope token, we can then create our Spotify instance and pass it the authentication read token. After that, let's go ahead and create our main method that will be called once our script is executed. And in here, we want to call the method to get the user tracks, the saved tracks for the user. So we read from our Spotify subscription in the given scope. Once we read the data, we want to print it out. And then in the last row of our script, we want to call the main method inside of our if name equals main check. Before we now execute our script, we need to find the username and therefore we need to log into our Deezer account. As you can see, I already used the contacting John Doe account here. And when I log on in, I can see this username, this Benutzername here, and we can just copy and paste that into our script. And we are done with that kind of script for now. So let's take care of the exports up here. What we can do is go to the Spotify for developers section and then log in with our same account we use for Spotify. And then we can create a new app here. So we'll call this Spotify music adder and give it some description, some short description and then create it. What we can see here is a client ID and secret. Those are the two elements we need to export into our terminal now, into our session. So let's go ahead and copy the exports from our script and replace the values with our values from our Spotify music app. So let's go ahead and export the three values here with the Spotify client ID, client secret and redirect URL. One really interesting thing about the Spotify redirect URL is that we have to also define this inside of the Spotify application. But first let's go ahead and export this as HTTP localhost 8080. So we're going to use our localhost as a proxy here to get the results we want without having an actual application web server running. Of course, also let's make sure that our script is correct and then go back to our application and edit the settings of it in order to add the redirect URI as one of the elements here to make sure that our script is actually working correctly. So let's hit the save button here and then finally go back to our terminal and start executing our script. Once we start the Spotify script now, we will be redirected to a Spotify page that tells us that an application is trying to access our account. Once we allow this, we can then see the output being printed to our console. What we can also do is forward this output into a JSON file in order to be able to open it correctly and then copy the content and paste it into a JSON formatter, for example, online. So what we're going to do here is again, copy it, paste it into our formatter, and then look at the JSON content in a formatted manner in order to be able to see the different parts attributes in here. What we can see is that we have href, we have a different items, and then all the information from the artist and the title, the track itself. The kind of content we want to extract from here is the artist name, the song name, and then the ID of that specific track. 
The amount of information we get from the Spotify API is too much, so we want to reduce our track information to the elements we just talked about before, the track list. It holds all the values that are in our JSON, so what we want to extract from it are the artist's name, song name and the track ID. So let's create a new reduced tracks list and try to get the tracks from our JSON object. Once we've done that, we want to check whether our tracks is empty in order to make sure that we return an empty list and not get any errors. Once we've done that, we want to go through all the tracks in our track list and then extract the track name, artist name and track ID before we then append it to our reduced tracks list and then return it to our caller. Let's also go to our main method and add our reduced tracks call to reduce the amount of information and then print our new reduced tracks variable here. Let's switch back to our terminal and re-execute our script. And now we can see that we somehow get an empty list. So I made a mistake here and let's remove this whole checking since our items contain all the elements. So our items is actually the tracks list and not our actual object. So what we can do is here, we can remove this upper part and then let's first try to get the actual tracks by using a list comprehension here. So let's go ahead and get the track element of each of the tracks inside of our items list. As we've seen several times before in this course, list comprehensions can be really handy when we're trying to map or filter elements in a list. Only once we have done our basic read capabilities, this checking for none in the tracks becomes present again when writing files and tracks to our system. So as mentioned, let's go ahead and remove this whole part and then we are just left with the tracks and now we can see that our tracks have been printed in this triplet form to our console. In order to clean up our code a little bit, let's create this get safe tracks method that calls the basic functionality that we implemented in our main method now. And then once we have done that, we want to go back to our terminal and re-execute our script in order to make sure that our refactoring has been done completely and correctly. So let's quickly fix our code here and then print the tracks to our console and then we can finally see that it's still the same as before. Refactoring your code while you're working on it is a really really important topic and can lead to very good results when done correctly and often. If you don't refactor your code while you go for it, it can be that your code gets into this spaghetti mode so you're producing spaghetti code which is not readable for other people and is hard to maintain in the future. What we started to create here is we are going to do a main game loop which will run until the user actually ends our tool so we can add several tracks or call the get safe tracks method several times over without restarting our script. So what we do here is we create a user choice input variable that holds the thing that the user typed into our terminal when asked for input and then we try to convert it into an integer. So this throws a value error. So we have to catch that if the user does not give us a value and then of course for example print out that we are expecting a valid number to be entered. So for example in our case we want to have the number 0 to be done for the printing of our currently saved tracks. Number 1 will be adding a new track which we'll implement after we've done with the reading and the second number, number 2, will be for exiting our main game loop. In our choice 0 we want to print each track with the artist name and then the track name. So let's finish all the choices here before we then go in and actually again start to execute our script in the terminal. As we can see, the very last thing we now need to do is to actually give the user some information on what options are available. If we press 1, nothing happens, with 2 the script ends, and if we press 0 we get a list with the artist name and then the track names. So let's execute an additional method that prints the options for the user. So 0 will be list, second one will be add new save track, and third one will be exit. And if we execute this again in our terminal now, we can then see that our script is behaving the same way we want to have it. So let's now take it a step further and implement this second choice, choice number one, that will add new tracks to our save lists. So let's go back to the top of our script and copy and paste this read token in order to create a write token for our service. This write token and service instance will use the modify element instead of the reading subscription. Always make sure to adjust your documentation in order to tell people what your script actually does. And now we are ready to use this write scoped Spotify instance in order to write new files or add new files to our service. 
Since the behavior of our script, however, should be to ask for a new track and then the user gives it some track, we first need to implement this searching capability so that the user gives it, for example, some name of an artist and then the script provides it with a list of different artist tracks in order to understand which track should be added to the saved tracks list. In order to implement the just described capabilities, let's go to our choice number one and then add our search element. So we want to get some user input which will describe what kind of song the user wants to add. So let's create a new variable here and get the input from the user. This time we don't need to do any conversion to integer because this time it's actually a string that we're using. In order to keep our code clean, we now want to add a new method called search track to add or something like that. And then we define this method above of our print options method. And this method will take a parameter that is called search input. As we've done with the other methods, let's add a documentation string in order to give information about what this method does. Let's rename this one more time because I think get tracks for search is a little bit of a better naming for this method because it describes more what it's going to do. So it will give us a list of elements, a list of tracks with their artist names, track IDs and track names and return them as a list of triplets. So whenever we are looking at this return type, we can see that we can reuse our method here. And as we've described before a lot of times, always use the documentation when you're not sure how to do something or how to get a method, call a method, what parameters it takes. It's always helpful to check out examples or the official documentation. We are again using our read scoped Spotify instance here to call the search method with our search input and then reduce our tracks with the already existing reduced tracks method. Once we have the list of reduced tracks, we can just return it and then use this kind of information in our options element in order to give the user the indication what type of tracks are available. Previously, we talked about the problem that we will get into when we do the same method with two different callers and two different kind of JSON objects. So let's go ahead and check out the difference between the two JSON objects that are returned by the get save tracks and the search method. Here we can see that the search method returns the tracks and elements and here we can see that the tracks are hidden inside of an items list when using the save tracks element. In here you already have the tracks element. So what we are going to do is we're going to refactor our reduced tracks information method in order to make sure that we can differentiate in the same method and we can reuse it for different kind of systems. So let's go ahead and in the first run create a tracks element that has the items from our search method. In order to do that, we will just get the tracks and instead of that, we will get none if there is nothing. So we can do a simple check for none and then get our items from our tracks to get the list of items if our tracks is the element of the save tracks method. If this is not the case, then we can be sure that our list contains the elements from our get save tracks method instead of our format of our search tracks method, okay? Once we have done that differentiation, we can basically use both methods by calling the same string. And now we can see that both of them are working correctly without errors. And now we can finally go in and fix our read search elements inside of that script. Let's go ahead and print out all of our found tracks for the given search string, like we did it with our choice zero. And then again, get user input in order to decide which track is the actual correct one that the user wants to add to their saved tracks list. Once we have proved that our script is working up to this point, we can then add the next step in order to allow our script to add new tracks to our system. So if you click one and type a text here, for example, Tim, we can see different tracks and artists that are named after Tim and contain the word Tim. So let's go ahead and exit our script and then we can go to our examples again and then read up on how to add new tracks to our saved tracks list. For this specific use case, we need a modify scope instead of the read scope. So let's go ahead and cre again, create a new method that will be add selected track, and then we can give it our selection. So in this case, we want to pass it to track ID in order to add that track to our selection. Let's scroll up inside of our script and create this add selected track with our found tracks and selection method and then use our write scope to actually add a track. We will of course add a doc string here as always in order to give the user some information on what does 
method actually does and then we want to again add a try method because we want to parse the selection of our user and make sure that they actually used and selected a valid element. Inside of our try block we now want to do the right scoped call to our current user save tracks add method and insert our track ID for our save track. Let's assemble the track name from the selected track 0 and 1 which are the artist name and the artist track and then we're going to print it out and as a last step finally add the track to our saved tracks list by using the track ID that is saved in the third element so we're using the index 2 here. Once we've done that go back to our terminal and re-execute and now we can see that we can list our tracks and we can also search for new tracks, add new tracks to our saved list for example the sixth song here and then we can see that we have insufficient client scope. Since we talked about the scopes here before we can already understand where this problem might come from so let's scroll up to the top of where we define the scopes and then search for a fault there and here we can see that we have the right scoped spotify instance but we have the auth of read token instead of write token so let's replace that part here and then we're good to go and try it again if we now check our script again we see that we can add a new track so let's do john legend and then we get a few elements that we can take and we're adding the zeroth element so it says that it's added now so let's check our list and here we can see john legend all of me is added to our saved scripts at the moment we're only using the currently set username so maybe give the user some option to provide a username when calling the script in order to make sure that that they can use their own subscription and their own username here if you want to see where the access from this app comes from you can log into your spotify account and see and also remove the access from this app this already concludes the first part of our Spotify music adder. In the next section we're going to add a Telegram bot to it. But now let's go over it and see what we did here. So we imported the library, we defined some methods that will take care of user information, of track information and reduce the amount of it. We then use this kind of knowledge to create a reusable method that we can use and that returns the triplet of elements with the artist name, track name and the track ID. We also added a main game loop at the end of our script that will keep the system running until our user finally exits it with a number two. The main method is called using this if main element. Let's now go ahead and add the telegram bot which will make this a much nicer project. 